Welcome to this video about setting up an AWS S3 bucket for public images. In this video, as the title says, we will set up an AWS S3 bucket where we can store images that can be used in a web-based image gallery. To get started, access your AWS console. Check to make sure that your region is appropriate. For me, I want it to be in the Northern Virginia region. Next, we need to access the Amazon S3 service. There are several ways to get there. One way is to click on Services, then find and click on S3. This will get you to your S3 dashboard. We see that currently I have no buckets in this AWS account. Click on one of the buttons labeled Create Bucket. The first thing to do is to name your bucket. As we will see in a moment, this must be a unique name, not only for your buckets. Then, double-check that you're using your desired region. Now scroll down and uncheck the box labeled Block All Public Access. This will open up the bucket to public access. This is necessary if you want your images to be requested and received by web browsers. Note that this will bring up a cautionary note about your S3 bucket. There are better ways to do this, but they are either beyond the scope of this video or our available tools. Check the box in this notice to indicate that you have read the note of caution. Now click on Create Bucket. Uh-oh, note that mine did not create. I have a warning that my bucket name is not unique, so I need to try for one that is. This is a common problem if you use a set of words for your bucket name. Probably it's best to come up with a standard coded naming convention for your buckets and other AWS assets. Here I'll go with CAP Photo Bucket for mine. CAP are my initials. It appears that works, so I will click on Create Bucket again. Here we are back in our S3 dashboard. There is a message near the top that indicates that our bucket has been successfully created, and we can see our bucket in the list on the dashboard. Before using it, we have to set a couple of more settings for this bucket. Click on your bucket name in the list. Notice that there are a set of tabs for your bucket. The overview page will allow you to upload objects and then work with the objects that you upload. The Properties tab provides some options for letting you set up your bucket. We'll skip these for now. Permissions allow us to once again determine what can access our bucket or bucket items. Note that Block All Public Access is off as we set it when we created the bucket. It turns out that that will make the bucket accessible, but not necessarily the objects inside the bucket. It's possible to set access rights to each individual object that is in the bucket. But for our example application, we will be posting multiple objects or image files. We can use a bucket policy that will make sure that all of the objects that we post here are public. To do that, first click on the button labeled Bucket Policy. Then type in, very carefully, the bucket policy shown here. Each character is important. Note that in line 8 we have the words, your bucket name. You need to replace those words with your actual bucket name. I will do that with mine, CAP Photo Bucket. Once you have typed in the bucket policy, click on Save. Note that once again a warning message is displayed, showing that you have made all objects in the bucket public. For now, we will not worry about the Management and Access Points tabs. I think that is enough in settings for our Photo Manager example. Let's upload a photo and see how we can access it from a browser. From the Overview tab, click on either of the two areas that show Upload. You can then browse for or drag a file here to be uploaded. I'm going to simply drag one of my image files here. I can then click on Next. On this page, I can adjust permissions for this particular file. As I have already set a bucket policy to cover it, I will click Next again. On this page, I could change how the file is stored. I'll keep it as is and then go ahead and click on Upload. After a few moments, your file will upload and appear in your bucket. Now click on the file name. After clicking on the file, you will see a dialog where you can adjust various things about the file in your bucket. For us, we will simply capture the URL for the image here. So, copy the link that you find next to the label object URL. Let's see if it works. 
I'll open another tab in my Chrome browser. Then I'll paste in the URL. And voila, my image appears. So now I have an S3 bucket for storing images for my web application example. In a later video, we will look at how our application can access this bucket.